Hey guys, iOS 11.3 is practically here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what matters, the biggest changes Apple has implemented and everything in between, including performance and battery life. So everything you need to know about this update before updating. Now this might actually be one of the last major iOS 11 updates we get before iOS 12. There will be some minor ones, but 11.3 is likely to be it, the end of the road. Now the good news is this is basically like the iOS 10.3 update last year. It includes a lot of stability and bug fixes, just overall performance performance, and it's what you would have expected Apple to release at the very beginning, but it's good that we're getting it now at least. Now, the very first change that I noticed is that it actually returns a lot of storage to you. So if you guys needed a few extra gigabytes, especially on a larger gigabyte device, if you fill that up, it clears out a lot of storage and uh, you might notice some change there. But the number one thing this update provides for me personally, why I updated and why I've been using a beta for the last few weeks is the performance. Man, this thing is speedy. The animations are quick especially the one on the app switcher they actually sped that animation up but overall it just feels so snappy much better than iOS 11.2 did although there are still some hiccups here and there it's much better than what it used to be and definitely with iOS 12 I hope Apple keeps improving upon that but it definitely feels much better okay and the star of the show of course is Apple's enhanced battery monitoring software here and CPU throttling switch so if you actually jump into battery you'll see a new section called battery health beta you jump into it and here you can see the battery life of your device. This was the promise change that Apple did implement. And as you can see, I am at a 100% capacity. So peak performance capacity, I won't have any option to enable CPU throttling or disable it. But if you do have an affected device with a degraded battery, you will see a switch in here to where you can either get longer battery life and worse performance or vice versa. So it's nice that Apple gave you that option here. And I've been using this beta for several weeks already, you know, since beta three, and I've noticed a phenomenal increase in my battery life on my iPhone 10. It actually does help so much. It seems like the optimization is finally there. So I'm sure it's not a placebo. If you guys do update, you are likely to experience better battery life. And this is actually backed up by many users who are reporting a very similar thing. All right, so on the right will be iOS 11.3, on the left 11.2. If we jump into the keyboard and go to dictation, you'll see that there is a new interface. It's a lot more friendly for the iPhone 10, fills up the entire bottom section, and you literally just have to Click on this to go back and the animation's a little different there too. Now jump into spotlight search and if you actually click on the search tab here, notice the new animation that Apple has included here. It's slower, but I think a little bit more pleasing. Definitely one of the coolest is that smart invert now if you decide to use that black mode, if we enable it and jump into Safari, it will no longer reverse your images and content inside of Safari. So on iOS 11.2, as you can see, those would be highlighted and uh, will reversed. And if I actually go to a video, they play normally and not like this. Unfortunately, most third-party apps like Snapchat are still reversed as the developer actually needs to add a setting where they aren't, but overall some definite improvements to the smart invert function. And inside of Safari, your bookmark folders now have actual icons on them. So you can actually see what's inside of them before you go inside and uh, you can back swipe here too which is cool now all throughout ios 11.3 you'll notice in many applications such as the itunes store app store and so on you'll get a lot of splash screens very similar to this apple is taking privacy very seriously and they want you to know that there will be a new icon up in the top right whenever your privacy is being concerned so whenever that's being used by an application you'll see this new icon there but a lot of new splash screens throughout several apps and finally icloud messages are enabled so you can finally enable that from iCloud and start sharing them with your other phones or other devices that you have. So of course, two-factor authentication is needed here, but you'll know it's working when you go to delete and it'll ask you if you want to delete it from all iCloud threads. An ever-present scourge of your messages appearing out of order has finally been addressed and fixed in one of the last betas. So iOS 11.3 fixes the most infuriating part of using an iPhone for me where your messages would just be a jumble. And there are also several new emojis, including a lion, a dragon, skull and this teddy bear, which is pretty cool. Of course, this is an iPhone 10 specific one, but very cool nonetheless. Now within the stock messages application, Apple has added a new feature called business chat, where with specific vendors, you'll actually be able to, within the app, talk to them, ask them any questions you have, basically get support. And so far the companies on board are Discover, Hilton, Lowe's, and Wells Fargo. And with iOS 11.3, Apple is supporting ARKit 1.5, which includes a lot of improvements to augmented reality, including multi-surface support and many more. So 
it's very cool that Apple is expanding upon this really nifty thing. I don't have mine set up right now, but Apple did include updated supports for the Apple TV. So the actual remote, you'll be able to do some more things such as renaming certain things. There's a new text dialogue. Overall, the functionality has been slightly improved for the Apple TV remote. Of course, there's now support for AirPlay 2 and with that multi-room audio support, especially if you have more home pods and audio devices, you'll see them here in this 3D touch widget when you actually 3D touch on the music player and you'll be able to control everything individually here. Now, stereo pairing for home pods is not active nor enabled right now. In the future, it will come hopefully with the final release of iOS 11.3, but I'm not holding my breath for that one. And within the stock music application, you're going to see a lot of videos now. Apple has greatly expanded the support for music videos and the focus on them. And quite possibly the coolest yet smallest, but also the most useful feature I'll be showing you in this video when you actually are in a now playing tab for the music and you want to go back, you actually get a choice now to go to the artist or the album of the song you were just listening to. This is so incredibly useful. Apple, yes, give us more choices like this. And for the longest time, I was plagued by this issue. On the lock screen, the progress bar for your music would be stuck at one or just zero seconds, even though the music was playing. And it was so infuriating because you never knew where your music was. So Apple has fixed that in the latest 11.3 betas. And inside of the update tab on the App Store, apps now have the actual size of the update as well as the version number included here. And this is actually very useful. If you actually jumped into the purchased on your account, you'll see the exact date when the application was purchased. So very useful as well. Those small little details, Apple is bringing out a lot more usefulness in iOS. And within App Store reviews, you can now sort these reviews by most recent. So the fact that you get to do this now, extremely useful. And when downloading an application in the App Store, as you can see now, there is a slightly new animation, a graphic for you to go by and the sound has changed as well. So let me bring my face in view here. All right, there we go. A lot more satisfying to download apps now. And in the App Store, you are finally allowed to make family purchases using Face ID. Previously, that was just limited to a passcode. And within the health application, health records can now be synced from your care provider. This way, you'll have all of them available right away in this application. And Apple has made many under the cover changes to iBooks. It was called Books for One Beta, then Reversed. But inside, you can actually now use a true dark mode. So for those with an organic LED display like the iPhone, you can get a pitch black mode that'll actually save you battery life and be easier on the eyes. So jump in here and here is true black. Looks really great for reading actually. And inside of iOS 11.3, you can expect to find Safari 11.1. This includes all of Apple's latest patches and fixes, including better password autofill, a better reader mode, and improved protection against cross-site web tracking. Now HomeKit on iOS 11.3 no longer requires the device you're setting up to have an authorization chip for the home application to read it. So that's great for a lot of other devices. It'll improve compatibility. And iOS 11.3 11.3 includes advanced mobile location. So when you can dial 911, if you have this feature enabled, it'll send them your location right away. And that way save a lot of time and possibly maybe you can't even tell them your location. It could save your life in the future. So definitely a great feature to have. Now holding volume up and the side button on 11.3 will now automatically bring up the passcode screen after it locks your device. So let's go ahead and do it on both. After I click cancel, Notice that the passcode screen is here for your convenience so you don't have to swipe up to get to it. Now, whenever you're inside of an application in the App Store and you wanna to go to the category that this application belongs to, click on it right here. As you can see, this one belongs to photo and video and it'll take you to that category. Previously, you were not able to do that. So nice little shortcut there. Now in iOS 11.3, the calculator bug animations have finally been fixed. So look at the plus icon here as I'm doing some addition, one plus two plus three. As you can see, it just flashes, it doesn't fade. Now on 11.3, three, you can see the fade has returned. So even though Apple fixed that bug before, it was finally properly addressed in 11.3. Such a minor little detail, but it's nice that Apple focuses on those. And not something you'll probably see or use unless you're in a classroom, but iOS 11.3 adds a brand new class kit framework. And the actual keynotes that we're about to see here is going to focus on that and iOS 11.3 in depth. So it'll allow you to take questionnaires and a lot of additional classroom features. All right, guys, so there are a ton of smaller 
color changes, little things I found here and there. But these were the most important, those things that you need to know before updating. I mentioned them in all my videos before, none of them are exactly new, but I wanted to bring them all together in one place so you guys have a good summary of what's included in this update. Also, I'd like to talk about performance now. So let's go ahead and run a Geekbench, but I gotta tell you, the animations are much better. On older devices, you'll notice a bigger difference, but even on the iPhone 10, the fact that they shortened the app switcher animation, it just feels really, really good. So let's go ahead and get a number here see if we have anything to compare it to on an older version. And here we go, that is the result on iOS 11.3 beta 6, very likely to be similar to the final version. On 11.2.6, that's what we got. So a little bit lower, but definitely not reflected in the performance on the multi-core score test. So that is amazing. iOS 11.3 is a great update. What iOS 10.3 essentially was for older devices. It's definitely the update we needed at the very beginning. Now, should you guys update? There is really no reason not to. If you're waiting out for a jailbreak, that's the only reason I can think of. It's more secure, it's faster, better battery life, and of course, some nice little features thrown in there. So thanks for watching, guys. Definitely do update. I'd insist on it, in fact. So iOS 11.3, great update from Apple. Peace.